Dear learners, welcome to this session. In the previous sessions, I have discussed tribal culture in northern and central India. In this session, I will discuss the tribal culture in northeast and southern India. As it is not possible to cover each and every tribe, I will provide information on culture of selected tribe in these regions. Tribes of Nagaland constitute a major percentage of the total population of the state. Angami tribe, Ao tribe, Chakesang tribe, Chang tribe, Kyam Nyongan tribe, Kuki tribe, Konyak tribe, Lotha tribe, Hom tribe, Pochuri tribe, Rengma tribe, Sumi tribe, Sangtam tribe, Yimchungru tribe, and Zeliang tribe are prominent tribes of Nagaland. Even the tribes like Angamis, Aos, Konyaks, Lothas, and Sumis are predominant. The tribal communities of Nagaland are scattered over a large portion of the state. One of the significant aspects of the culture of tribes of Nagaland is their distinctive character. Each tribe can be identified in terms of indigenous traditions, customs, language, and dresses. The tribes of Nagaland have their own distinctive language. In Nagaland, the different tribes speak around 60 different dialects, which belong to the Sino-Tibetan language family. Traditional songs and dance forms are an integral part of the rich culture of the tribes of Nagaland. The costumes of tribes of Nagaland are very colorful. Interestingly, some of their dresses are designed as per the different occasions. Tribal dances are performed during the celebration of the festivals and marriage ceremonies. They also wear colorful jewelry. Nagaland is a land of festivals. All the tribes celebrate their distinct seasonal festivals with a pageantry of color and music followed by a feast. The tribals of Nagaland regard their festivals sacred. Participation in these celebrations is compulsory. Most of these festivals revolve around agriculture, as agriculture is the mainstay of the tribal society of Nagaland. Although some religious and spiritual sentiments are interwoven into secular rites and rituals, the predominant theme of the festivals is offering prayers to the Supreme Being having different names in different Naga dialects. The tribal festivals are celebrated all over the state. Like for instance, Nazu festival is one of the most popular festivals of Pochuri tribe of the state. This festival is celebrated for 10 continuous days in the month of February. These festivals are celebrated with glitter and gaiety. Let us now learn about the tribes of Manipur. The Paite tribe originally belonged to the Kuki Chin Mizo group. This group hails from the Tibeto Burman family. In Manipur, the Paite tribes are considered to be one of the scheduled tribes, mainly located in Lamka town of Churachandpur district. The Paite tribe, originally known as belonging to the Kuki family of tribes in Manipur, gained their recognition of a separate tribe in the early 1950s. Hence, they are now recognized by the constitution as Paite. From then on, they are known by their present name. The word Paite also has got etymological significance. If one dissects Paite into two terms, Pai stands for marching, while Te means people. As a whole, Paite means a group of people marching. Besides Manipur, the Paite tribes also inhabit Mizoram. The Paite tribes are pious and religious minded. Majority of Paite tribe are followers of Christianity. Most of them were converted to this religion in the 19th century due to their intervention, due to the intervention of British missionaries. They also worship their gods, Pathian. Just like many of the Paite tribal communities, they were known to have originated from the mountain caves known as Khul. Dance, songs, tales, all linked to everyday chores of the life of these Paite tribe is one of the very interesting features of this particular tribe. Zanthalam is a popular dance style performed by this community. Both Paite males and females 
actively take part in it. Paite tribe converse in a dialect popularly known as Paite. By nature, the Paite tribe are timid, recluse people who are truly committed to whatever they do. Although the Paite tribe are mainly agriculturists, many of them have achieved remarkable feats. Apart from the Paite tribe in Manipur, the state has more than 20 tribes currently. Some of them are Thodu, Koki, Simte, Zo, Mar, Thangkul, Naga, Kom Zaite, and many more. The lifestyles and ways of living of these tribes are of so m no much difference to one another, but due to the different tribal languages, they form different tribes and communities. Now let us see the culture of the tribes of Arunachal Pradesh. The entire population of Arunachal Pradesh is divided into three cultural groups based on socio-political religious affinities. The first group of tribes profess Buddhism. They include the Monpas, Shardukpans, Mimbas, Khamtis and Singpos. The second group consists of tribes like the Akas, Khoyas, Mijis, Bangnis, Solungs, Nishi, Apatanis, Hilmiris, Adis, Mishmis, Tangsas, etc. These tribes practice a form of religion which may be called magical religious beliefs and practices. The third group of tribes are Wanchos and the Noctes who believe in a sort of animist religion and practice headhunting. The people of this rich and colorful area are of many faiths and speak many tongues. The Nishis regard the sun goddess as the chief divinity while the sun and the moon are worshipped as the Doni and Polo by the Adis. The dance and the song are an integral part of cultural life of the tribes of Arunachal. Adi tribe of Arunachal Pradesh have a well-organized village council called Kevangs. Polyandry is unknown but polygamy is practiced in Adi society. Adi women are very good weavers and Adi handicrafts are of high standard. Agriculture is a main profession and they prefer primitive jhum cultivation, although they are gradually taking up settled cultivation recently. Mopin is one of the principal festivals of the Adi tribe. The Dre festival is celebrated sometime in the month of June for a good paddy crop and for protection of the paddy crop from pests. The Moram festival is celebrated in the month of January-February to ensure communal welfare and prosperity. The Ropi ceremony is basically associated with war. This ceremony is performed when a war party is successful in killing an enemy. Among the tagging tribes, the culture, festivals, etc. revolve around all the deities and spirits. The tagins are basically agriculturists. They live on agricultural products and meat which they get by hunting wild animals and by killing domestic animals like mithun, pig, etc. Besides paddy, which is the main agricultural crop, they produce maize, pulses, vegetables, etc. Mishmi may be termed as a festive tribe or tribe of joy, particularly since they believe any day of the year is auspicious for a ceremony if provision exists and animals and birds are available for sacrifice. Name of the festival varies from clan to clan and up to certain extent. D. Batai is the main festival of the Taraun clan of Mishmi tribe. Tamla or Taka is a festival celebrated by sacrificing animals every year to please village deity who protects the village. Re is one of the most important individual festivals celebrated by Idus for six days. The festival is so expensive that this can only be celebrated once or twice in lifetime. During the festival, outsiders are not allowed to enter the village. Most of the festivals of Idus are related to agriculture. Mishmis are an exception to the concept of village community, which is very strong among other tribes of Northeast. A Mishmi village is merely a scattered collection of houses. Obviously, village chief system or autocratic or democratic ruling system 
is almost absent in their society. Handloom and handicrafts are in the blood of Mishmi people. Spinning, extraction of fiber and weaving are work of Mishmi women while the men are famous for cane and bamboo work. The most important festival of Wanchos is Ojiele, which is celebrated during March, April, just after sowing paddy. It is celebrated by all Wanchos, irrespective of area of inhabitants. Dancers are held around long ceremonial pole called Jangban, planted for the occasion. Sakila and Chachai festivals are held to celebrate the sowing of millet and paddy. Chachaban is the festival celebrated on the occasion of harvesting of millet. Besides this, Laudangu, Chachian and Pautakle are also the festivals connected with harvesting. Wancho women are expert spinners and weavers. Wanchos have a keen sense of colors and combination. Wanchos are also known for wood carving. The central motif in wood carving is a human head. Monpas have recorded history in their own script found in Gompas, a script similar to those of Bhutan and Tibet. Monpas are expert in weaving woolen carpets in their traditional way. Monpas of Tawang are expert paper makers who are producing handmade papers since ages. Monpas are lovers of songs, music and dances, but all their songs do not always carry meaning. Torgya is one of their principal festivals, celebrated every 11th month in the year to drive away evils of the year. Losar is the New Year festival held in February. Buddha Purnima is one of their principal festivals, celebrated for a month with meditation by elders, prayers by all and dances by younger generation. Khoyas are agriculturists. Their festivals are based on agriculture or cultivation. Most important festival of the Khoyas is the Chasoi festival they celebrate in the month of January, February. They perform the rituals connected with this festival for eight days to ensure their prosperity and a good harvest as well as to drive away the evil spirits from the village so that these cannot afflict them with various calamities. The Losar is the principal festival of the Khampas. They celebrate this festival twice during the year. The first Losar is celebrated as a sort of New Year festival during their first month, Dawa Tamgo, that is in the month of January or February. It is celebrated for a week for prosperity, good health and happiness. Similarly, it is again celebrated for one week during last month of the year. Dawa Chungipat, which is celebrated during December or January for the same reasons. The principal festivals for the Mijis is Chidang. It is celebrated for eight days, usually in the month of December. They observe this festival for eight days, in which the sky deity Sijanguni, earth deity Sajanguni, and other deities living in the hills and rivers are worshipped for a good crop and welfare and prosperity of the whole community. A ceremony called Dhorom Iji is performed when an epidemic breaks out in a village to drive away evil spirits responsible for the epidemic. During successful killing in a war, a ceremony called Dhoma Dainuai is performed for protection of the slayer from the spirit of the slain enemy. For the Padam tribe, Solung Etor festival is one of their agricultural festival performed during the month of March, April. Etor is one of the principal festivals of Minyong tribe celebrated during the month of March or April. The Solung festival is celebrated in September to ensure good harvest and to prevent evil spirits from coming into the village to afflict the villagers with disease and evil spirits. Dong Kong is a ceremony performed after a successful war operation. After killing a tiger, they perform Myo Song ceremony. The Minyongs believe that diseases are caused by evil spirits. The ceremony of treating patients is known as coining ceremony. Ayit Miri is a priest 
and a village doctor who can cure diseases through rituals and ceremonies of magico religious type the member tribe celebrate the buddha purnima and other buddhist festivals with utmost serenity and calm atmosphere most important member festival is losar festival which is celebrated twice a year in the first member month dawa toniba falls in january february and during the second member month dawa chomnipa which falls around december january the purpose is to express their gratefulness to the gods for keeping them happy and prosperous in the outgoing year and extorting the gods to bestow more prosperity and happiness in the coming year the bardo festival is another important festival of the members it is performed to ensure the communal welfare and also to impress the villagers that a person leading a leading a pious life in the world goes to heaven and enjoys blissful life there while a person leading a sinful life here goes to hell after death only to face a tormented existence there the yobins are basically good agriculturists and are comparatively advanced in this trade they have their own land where they produce rice millet different vegetables and pulses yobins are traditionally good bee keepers the religion of yobins is based on nature worship and the world of spirits they have their own deities and spirits whom they propitiate by sacrifice their festivals are usually based on agriculture hunting and other professions the festivals are associated with dance songs and music let us now discuss the tribal culture in assam assam's rich art and culture is also the result of the contributions of the austro asiatics the negroids the dravidians the alpines the indo mongoloids the tibeto burmans and the aryans who ventured into assam through various routes bihu is the chief festival and assamese the principal language of the state bodos constitute nearly half of the total scheduled tribe population of the state the other tribes are miri or mishings mikir or karbis rabha for the boro tribes agriculture is the main source of livelihood for the boro tribes agriculture is the main source of livelihood they cultivate ahu and sali paddy kachari that is sonwal kachari lalung that is tiwa the dimasa and dewri they rear the iri silk cocoons the famous red iri cocoons are reared by the bodos of kokrajhar the men folk are expert in making cane and bamboo products bodo language has no script of its own but devanagari script is used the bodo sahitya sabha has contributed largely towards the development of the bodo literature by encouraging more publications and writings in bodo language the influence of the assamese language is noticed in most of the songs of the bodo tribe kherai puja is generally observed before and after the cultivation for reaping a good harvest besides the religious occasions they also observe the bihus of assam the musical instruments of the bodo community are kham or mandal jotha khwanbang or tal shipuri or flute torkha or drum the bodo women wear dokna a single piece of garment covering from chest to ankles blouse is used to cover the upper part of the body the men wear dhoti shirt and trousers they wear a scarf called patani which has geometrical designs on the border patani is usually the symbol of the bodo tribe the staple food of the bodos is rice they also prepare homemade rice beer called jumai the culture of the mishings is considered widely as rich diverse and colorful the dances are called pok song or soman the songs in mishing local dialect are called the nitom they are of three types known as the oinitom akunitom and anunitom aku mainly conveys the rich culture and the history of the mishing tribe and the oi and anunitom are the contemporary love songs and use modern music the drums cymbals and the flute 
are the common musical instruments used by the Mishing tribe. The main festival of the Mishings is the Ali Ai Ligang, which is celebrated in the month of February on the first Wednesday of Asmi's month Fagun. It is to mark the sowing of the new crops. The Mishings also celebrate religious festivals such as Dobur. They sacrifice chickens to please the gods for the offenses committed. When Dobur is celebrated on the public road, travelers are not allowed to cross the road, but they can do so by paying money. Some of the other religious festivals are Talenyu, Oram Apin, etc. They also observe the three main bihus that the festivals of Assam, namely Mag Bihu, Bohag Bihu, and the Kati Bihu. Let us now discuss the tribes of Tamil Nadu. Tribes of Tamil Nadu are mainly prevalent in the district of Nilgiris. Of all the distinct tribes, the Kotas, the Todas, the Irulas, the Kurumbas, and the Badagas form the largest group who mainly had a pastoral existence. The men from this family of the tribes are occupied in milking and grazing their large herds of buffaloes and pastoral farming. This tribe is distinguished by its traditional costume, thick white cotton cloth having stripes in red, blue or black called putukuli worn by both women and men over a waist cloth. They settle mainly in moons comprising of five, six typical wagon shaped windowless split bamboos, reeds and thatch huts. They do not worship any god and their consciousness is cosmic. The Badagas belong to the backward class and are not classified as tribals. They comprise of an agricultural community and settle near Nilgiris of Tamil Nadu. They are engaged in tea cultivation and potato farming. They speak a language which is a mixture of Tamil and Kannada language. They form the largest group of tribes and boast a rich oral tradition of folk tales, songs and poetry. These tribes are Hindus and belong to the Shiva sect. The Badaga celebrate the Hindu festivals such as Diwali and one among the very famous festival celebrated by this group is Pongal. The Kotas are mainly concentrated in the Tiruchigadi area in the Nilgiri hills. They are distinguished by their colorful folk dances and are basically musicians. They are mainly engaged in producing handicrafts. This tribe of Tamil Nadu are expert ironsmiths, potters and carpenters. Their population is very small and they live in huts that have a living and sleeping area and a place of worship. Their language is similar to that of the Badagas. They speak Tamil and a form of Kannada language. The Kurumba tribe of Tamil Nadu inhabit the intermediate valleys and forests in villages. They were mainly known for their black magic and witchcraft. They used to hunt and gather for living in the past, but they have shifted their cultivation into coffee and tea plantation. The Irulas tribe of Tamil Nadu occupy the lower slopes and forests at the base of the Nilgiri hills. They constitute the second largest group of tribes after the Badagas and they are largely similar to the Kurumba tribe of Tamil Nadu. This tribe produces honey, fruits, herbs, roots, gum, dyes, etc. and trades them with the people in the plains. This tribe is famous for snake catching and removing the venom. They are also gradually changing from the earlier ways of hunting to a more modern form of life. Andhra Pradesh and Telangana boasts of a large tribal population, the main being the Chenjus, Gonds and Kondaredis. The tribes of Karnataka, namely Toda, Jenu Kuruba, Bedar, Hakipi, Shulaga, etc., are known for their costumes, cultural habits, folk dances and songs, foods and their way of celebrating different festivals and occasions. A renowned dance format of the tribal communities of Karnataka is the open air folk theatre, better known as Bayalata. The mountainous regions of Kerala are inhabited by tribes, namely Urali tribe, Paniyan tribe, 
Kapu tribe, Kanika tribe, Kadar tribe, etc. Cultural exuberances of these tribes are exhibited in a number of aspects house building, norms, and rituals bear resemblance to the tradition and ethnicity of the tribal cultures. So, learners, in this session, I have discussed the tribal culture in Northeast and Southern India. With this, I have completed the block titled Introduction to Tribal Society and Culture. In this block, we have learned about the tribal social systems, tribals and religion, rites of passage and tribal languages, art and culture. In the next session, I will start with the second block titled Tribal Society in Transition. Thank you.